hi, I'm Punita here from Huawei Global Training Center. And today we're going to discuss about the topic DHCP principle, part two. DHCP procedure based on L2 networking. So when the DHCP server and the DHCP client are on the same subnet, so basically will not what will happen is that this principle works without a DHCP relay agent. So you will notice that there is no delay relay agent over here. So we have the client, we have the server. So basically the communication will be between them. There is no gateway in between. So after the DHCP client started, it broadcast the DHCP discover packets to the server. Then the packets will contain some identification. So basically, the packet will contain some identification about the client. So this one will be information about the client itself. Then, upon that, the server will respond as offer, meaning that it will offer the packets to the client to respond based on the discovery that it has been receiving. Upon doing that, the client will send a request packet to the server requesting some parameters. What kind of parameters? IP address. So the request on the IP address. After that, the server will send an acknowledgement packet to the client allocating the parameters. So it will send the acknowledgement with the IP address information. So basically, this is how the whole thing works based on L2 networking without a relay agent. So next one, we're going to go through the same principle which is known as the L3 networking, whereby in this example, a relay agent is deployed. So what is the difference based on the previous one? So over here, we still have the client, we still have the server, but the problem is that they cannot communicate each other. So in order to make them communicate, we need the gateway. So that is basically the relay agent. So the relay agent acts as a gateway here. So they have to have a mediator between them to communicate. So usually the relay agent will start in the broadcast domain of the client to facilitate the communication with the server. So the communication will happen exactly the same but via the relay agent. So they will allocate the same request which is about the IP address. So basically what need to be done, the relay agent need to have the correct IP of the server. So it has to be configured with the correct server IP so that the relay agent can properly forward the packets sent by the base station. So basically it will collect the base station information and forward it to the server. So that is the difference between the L2 networking and L3 networking. So then there will be an acknowledgement about the information being transferred. Now, let's go through a next section. So this is about the VLAN plan for obtaining the packets. So before an OM channel is established, that is before the eNodeB sends the first DHCP packet, it must learn about the VLAN information. So VLAN is important for broadcasting and to avoid the brainstorming of the packets, example, the congestion of the packets. So we have to make sure it is synchronized well. So this communication will happen between a few modules. So we have e -Node B, we have DHCP server, and we have MAE. So basically, once the base station is power on and self-detected, VLAN networking has to be configured. So upon doing that, there will be a response. So basically, this is step one, 
then we have step two and then there will be a request and respond from the DHCP server. So once there is a respond, the OAM channel will be established towards the MAE platform. So over here, you will notice that there is a VLAN scanning. The eNodeB will scan and obtain the VLAN information. So this one is mainly used in a secure networking. For the detection, the OMC, Operation Maintenance Center, will start and send the detection packet to the plan IP address. The method is mainly used for a non-secure networking. So there are two methods. One is the scanning. Scanning is with the secure networking. Detection is with the non-secure networking. So VLAN configuration is very important in order to ensure that the packets are sent and also in order to synchronize the packets so that congestion doesn't occur. So we talk about OM channel now. So OM channel, there is also a self-setup procedure. So we're going to go through the self-setup procedure over here. So it is between E node B, relay switching out or routing and ME. So after the after the configuration is complete and once you start the detection, the set packets will be sent by the MAE to the relay. After that, the E node B, the relay will broadcast the ARP packets. ARP packets is contain the MAC address. So this one will happen during the commissioning process. Okay, so once the MAE create the commissioning process, it has to send an establishment to the base station. So this requires IPs like source IP and the destination IP. So it will obtain the MAC address. So after that, the DHCP will collect and record the VLAN. So upon once you have sent the packets which contain the MAC address, the DHCP module will collect and record the VLAN information. So the E node B will send the DHCP packet with no VLAN ID. Then the DHCP packets will be sent with the VLAN ID. So by exchanging the packets with its gateway and the server, the E node B will obtain the OM channel configuration data and will validate the data. So over here, the DHCP detects the lack of OM channel or the fault. So once the E node B respond to the overall establishment from the MAE, it can establish the OM channel already. So let's say the OM channel is failed to be established, the E node B will automatically restart the automatic establishment procedure. So that is the overall part. So you see if we already established the maintenance channel, so this is the OM channel, so it will establish the maintenance channel successfully. Unless there is an issue, then it will automatically restart. So over here, you can download and activate the software and configuration already. So that is the self-setup procedure. So the base station resets to load the configuration file via the OM channel. So there are two questions here, true and false. There are two VLAN learning modes, VLAN scanning and detection. VLAN detection is mainly used in secure networking scenario. So this is true or false. So it's actually false. This is used for non-secure networking scenarios. Okay, let's go to the second one. After the DHCP offer packet is sent to the base station site, the DHCP process is complete. This is true or false. This is also not true. Basically, there are some other process after that. So that is the summary of part two. In this part, we have discussed about the DHCP principle, the procedures, VLAN learning process, automatic OM channel establishment. That's all from me. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye.